I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk on health monitoring in free-ranging wolves in Germany. As in, uh, probably in your countries in Germany, the wolves are also a conflict species which uh, produces huge conflicts between uh, different groups of interest. And the last wolf was shot early in the last century. Since it's returning, um, it grows up to 24 packs by now. And since 1999, the IZW, the Leibniz Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research, was involved in the post-mortem investigations. In 2012, there was a wolf workshop in Berlin um, where it was supposed um, to uh, create a standard method for investigation, um, uh, post-mortem investigation, and to nominate an institute who should do all post-mortem investigations in wolves in Germany. And the management plans of several federal states of Germany nominated the IZW to do this task. Um, our task is not only to determine the cause of death, but also to save uh, evidences in forensic cases and also to detect um, underlying diseases and infectious agents like rabies, parvovirosis, canine distemper virus infection, hepatitis contagiosa carnis, pseudorabies, and trichinellosis. But we also detect harmful events of the past life of the wolf, like old fractures and old shot wounds. Our standard procedures include, first of all, computer tomography, um, then pathology, including necropsy and histology. If we need it, bacteriology as well. Um, and in every case, virological and parasitology investigations are done, and electron microscopy could uh, help us in several cases. Every wolf is going into the city, and there we have the first clues of fractures and also um, of um, bullets, but we can also detect metal foreign bodies. Then the wolf going to the necropsy, and before the real necropsy starts, of course, an identification of the animal um, and the measurements should be done. And we collect the ectoparasites to identify them. Um, we also document uh, uh, the outer lesions, and then uh, during the necropsy, we collect the evidence if, in case the wolf was shot. Now I will uh, show you some examples of lesions we found, like this spleen rupture. Um, we can, can find spleen ruptures uh, uh, very often, but in this case we found an hep a hepatitis due to septicemia, uh, which is a very rare case. We not only do the macroscopical uh, diagnostics, but also to identify the content of the stomach to find out on which wolves prey on. And we collect the uh, endoparasites, not only in the guts, but also in the other uh, organ systems. These are two rare cases, one of a uh, cyst in the kidney, and uh, this is the case of the um, septicemia with the purulent nephritis. Um, that case also had purulent myocarditis, um, but coming to the thorac uh, thoracic cavity, um, we could find often lung ruptures and also ruptures in the heart. Uh, the necropsy closes um, with the investigation of the head and the brain, and of course, with the investigation of the limbs and the rest of the carcass. Now I'll show you a few pictures of histological examples, like this tongue where we found sarcocyst uh, and an unrelated non um, purulent glossitis. Um, this lung um, was, uh, showed a non-purulent pneumonia due to, um, due to canine distemper virus infection. And this is uh, the example of the wolf with the septicemia, which showed also purulent nephritis and purulent encephalitis. 
coming to the results, most of all cases were um, uh, w which we investigated, um, we found the cause of death was traffic ac accident, not only hit by cars but also by trains. The second of um, uh, the second most cause of death was illegal killing, mostly due to shooting. But there was also one case where the wolf was uh, killed by car on purpose. The natural causes not only include um, infectious diseases, but also fights with other wolves and fights with boars. Three cases were unknown due to decomposing of the carcass. Coming to the underlying diseases, we found canine distemper virus infection in four cases, but only one case was related to the cause of death. In the other three cases, there were no macroscopical and no histological lesions in the organs. We found in two cases, trichinellosis and one case of septicemia with uh, streptococcus species. So far, our investigations on rabies, pseudorabies, parvovirosis, and hepatitis contagiosis, as well as echinococcosis, were negative. Coming to the results of the endoparasites, in 86% we found endoparasites, and 35% were positive for helminth and um, protozone co-infection. 35% also showed a single um, helminth infection, and 13% uh, showed pure uh, protozoan infection. You can find the identified species within the manuscript. Our uh, future perspective, perspectives are um, to find out if the health st status in German wolf population um, is changing due to the growing of the health, uh, due to the growing of the population. Um, we also want to know if there's a growing risk of infection due to the growing population, and we want to know if the conflicts with humans or companion animals are increasing or decreasing. Uh, to summarize this very briefly, um, the post-mortem investigation is important to get hold of infectious agents very, uh, in a very early stage. And um, so far, only canine distemper virus infection were identified. No other viral um, infection were found in the German wolf so far. And the most um, of all cause of death was um, a traffic accident. The second most cause of death might reflect uh, um, an acceptance problem in, um, with the wolves in Germany. And with this, I want to thank our cooperation partners and, of course, you for your attention. Attention. <laughs> Sorry.